Hey guys, it's Peter Moss Tangler, and today we're going to tie a nice generalist pattern um, fly I call the Bugaloo. We're going to tie it on a size 6 Gamakatsu B10S hook. Uh, this pattern lends itself well to tying in a lot smaller size. We're using a size 6 because it's easier to see. Uh, this is a fly that me and my little boy came up with, and um, it came out as a result of trying to use up uh, old materials that were left over after tying a bunch of different kinds of flies and um, at the time Thomas had an obsession with dubbing and spinning the dubbing on there so it uses dubbing so which is very important to Thomas so we're going to walk you through it and we're going to uh, sit back and relax and what I'm going to do is um, I just took this out of a normal part of my tying day so there's probably going to be uh, music in the background or whatever I apologize this was kind of on a whim um, hope y'all enjoy the fly and uh, let's get going. We're going to tie the bugaloo. It's probably my favorite little brim pattern. It also works great for um, little bass and little rivers and creeks around here. And works really well on spotted bass and little places and little red eyes. Like in little places like the little Cahaba and Cahaba River. And um, I came up with this fly a while back because there's a lot of leftover materials and uh, me and my little boy were sitting down Thomas was uh, probably three at the time three or four and uh, we were sitting down trying to figure out what to do with them <clears throat> and uh, at the time he was obsessed with dubbing so that's what we started with so what I'm going to start with first is I'm going to do use a little bit of this this is yellow and orange a yeah, nice combination of colors it's something I'd use on a redfish toad or a tarpon toad and every now and then you get some left over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off a little bit of it just pull it right off the skin let's see just going to pull it right off the skin might be easier to cut it So we'll do we'll just cut it real quick. There we are. So we cut off that little piece. And we're gonna tie it right down here at the bottom. And it's got some yellow and some orange in it. And I'm actually gonna to keep up to give it a little bit bigger body style. I'm not going to trim that off. I'm just going to kind of tuck that in real quick. Alright, now that we've got that in, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add in the dubbing that Thomas at the time was so obsessed with. But before we do that, I'm going to add in a little bit of hackle. And this is Whiting's Wooly Booger Hackle. Um, that comes in a cape. I bought this at the Orvis store in Atlanta and I'm going to still put in a pretty good little bit. Alright, now that we've got that on there, I'm going to pull out my dubbing and it's a nice little dubbing blend with a little bit of orange, tan and brown. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom. And I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, dubbing wax. This is Wapsie's dubbing wax. It's not a must. You can do it without it. But on this, um, this clear nylon thread I like to use, I have to admit it does help. So I got that on there. Right now I'm going to take it and I'm just going to spin it on there. I'm not 
too concerned with it. I'm not worried about it being neat, to be honest with you. Because I want it to be kind of kind of loose and a little bit silly. Alright. I'm going to take my woolly booger saddle hackle. And I'm going to bring it around. Do nice loose wraps in it. And I want that dubbing to still kind of still kind of show. I'm gonna do a couple couple of loose wraps coming up forward. And I'm just gonna anchor this all down. And you can use any kind of saddle hackle you want to for that. It's not a big deal. Whatever makes you happy. Happy trees. Alright. Now I'm going to take a brown piece of foam. You can grab this up at the craft store if you like. And try to get it as straight as I can. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to start up here with it nice and high. And you might think, well, that's a lot of foam to put on. And it is. And the reason I'm putting on so much foam is because, to be honest with you, I'll just trim it all off later. Now I'm going to take some white EP fiber. I'm going to take it towards the back back here. And I'm going to double it over. This is going to be my wing. There we go. There we go. Boom. Now the next thing we're going to do, this kind of bars off the old Ken Edmonds stealth bomber. I'm going to take a brown piece of foam, just a little square, and I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to cut, cut it in a nice little V just like that. I'm going to trim off that top part. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to trim it all out. Tie it in. Take it up towards the nose. And eye that hook. Loose wraps. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now we're going to kind of cinch down. And what the idea with this fly really came about was I wanted a um, fly that would just have a nice buggy appeal. They would kind of borrow off of Ken Edmonds Stealth Bomber because I just had so much success with it. Alright, now I'm going to bring it back up and I'm going to trim it off. So I want this collar to be pretty small. Plus with that little bomber fly, what you really get with it is a lot of action. Whenever you mend your line with it, and you always want to try to mend as little as possible, Whenever you mend with it, it actually dives and imparting that little bit of a action in it I think is wonderful. There we go. Alright. And we'll flip it over real quick. I'm just going to trim up a little bit. Thing on that side. So it's nice and flat. Bring it back over. And you can trim it up a little bit more if you like to. I think this is just fine the way it is. Now, I'm going to add some silly legs. Actually, these are round silicone legs. And uh, I buy these at the Ordinary Tackle Shop. And they're actually uh, for a jig skirt. I got the orange and brown. There we go. Tie on one side. Tie on the other side. Love it. All right, now I'm gonna bring them up 
forward. I kind of want to just pinch up just a hair. That's my front legs. I'm going to come up to the top like so. Bring them all up straight. And I'm going to do the same thing again, just a little bit longer. And boom. There's my little bugaloo fly. I'm going to give it two double half hitches to finish it off. A little bit of loom. And we'll call it a day. This is just a nice, quick, simple little fly that works really well for brim, little bass. I'm sure it worked well for trout too. But, uh, and of course, just vary up the colors and the things you're you're doing with it. And you'll end up with one that matches your watershed. We're going to loon it off. Boom. Flip it over. And we're going to call it a day. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Try the bug glue out. Try it in any color you like. And I hope it gives you as much luck as it's given me over the years. Um, post back. If y'all use it for some other warm water species and y'all use it for uh, trout or something like that and you have good success, I'd really like to hear about it. But uh, so far this is definitely a little brim killer. And uh, hope y'all enjoy. Look forward to hearing from you. And hopefully we'll keep this nice steady stream of videos up. So we'll catch you later.